So when we think about how drugs work, uh, most medicines that you can find in a pharmacy are so-called inhibitors. So they're small molecules that once in your body bind to their target protein and block its activity. However, many proteins that are drivers of diseases cannot be targeted by inhibitor. So to make like the 85% of proteins uh, in the human cell available for pharmaceutical intervention, like those proteins that simply don't possess enzymatic activity, it basically needed a different approach. And recently, an exciting new class of drugs has been defined that work very differently to inhibitors, and they are called molecular glue degraders. These molecular glue degraders are also small molecule compounds similar to enzyme inhibitors, but their, their mode of action is completely different. So what they do is they quite literally glue a problematic protein to the ubiquitin ligase complex, an enzyme of the cellular waste disposal system. Gluing of a target protein with ligase components results in ubiquitination and degradation of misregulated proteins. The only problem, however, is that we don't really know how to find or design such drugs, as the only two examples we have so far have been discovered by serendipity. So our aim here was to find new examples of molecular glue degraders, but also to try and establish a, a pipeline for how to systematically look for such compounds. So we teamed up with the Ben Ebert lab in order to ask the question whether there are more small molecules out there that use the, the, the same drug mechanism. To identify new molecular glue degraders, we correlated drug toxicity for thousands of drugs in relation to the expression levels of ubiquitin ligases. Every dot on this plot represents a cancer cell line. We looked for the drugs that would be particularly toxic in cell lines that have high expression levels of an E3 ligase. With this approach, we found a kinase inhibitor called CR8, which we hypothesized could be a novel molecular glue degrader. To determine which components are critical for CR8 toxicity, we employed functional genomics. We turn off every single gene and identify multiple components of, ubi of the ubiquitin ligase complex, as well as CDK12. So CR8 kills cancer cells by targeting cyclin K, an essential protein that in the cell associates with a kinase called CDK12, for degradation. And what we found was that, quite unexpectedly, CDK12 actually plays a key role in bringing cyclin K to the ubiquitin ligase in the presence of our molecular glue degrader. So to visualize how cyclin K, CDK12, and the ubiquitin ligase all come together, we solved a crystal structure of this drug-induced complex. And this clearly showed us that CR8 is a very unique example of a molecular glue degrader. CR8, in fact, turns the CDK12 into a drug-induced substrate receptor and positions cyclin K in an orientation that would be usually assumed by the target protein on the ubiquitin ligase. This leads to its uh, polyubiquitination and degradation in the cell. So other molecular glue degraders work by binding to the ubiquitin ligase, specifically to its substrate receptor modules, and hence redirects the ligase to ubiquitinate specific non-natural targets. And we and others thought that all molecular glue degraders work this way. But here we saw something quite unexpected. So CR8 actually binds on the side of the target and not the ligase. And only this composite interface is then able to recruit the ubiquitin ligase complex, but a rather incomplete one. Uh, and this is the, the other major difference, which is that CR8 actually altogether bypasses the canonical substrate receptor module this element that has been thought to be the key to hijacking a ubiquitin ligase, and instead uses CDK12, a binding partner of our target, as this rather unexpected glue-induced substrate receptor to achieve the correct geometry for cyclin K ubiquitination. Compared to other uh, kinase inhibitors that are related to CR8, CR8 carries a modification which turns out to make a contact with the ubiquitin ligase component. And so it seems that this chemical modification adds the ability to the small molecule to confer this molecular glue degrader activity, which the other molecules don't show. And the discovery that uh, these surface exposed chemical moieties might confer this glue degrader activity suggests that uh, similar modifications on other compounds may also confer glue degrader activity to other uh, small molecule uh, compounds. It was very rewarding and a great pleasure to collaborate with Nico Thoma, 
Susanna and Georg to characterize this novel molecular glue degrader mechanism. This work was possible by combining expertise in functional genomics, biochemistry, molecular and structural biology. In future, we really hope to identify more molecular glue degraders to understand the rules behind their design.